Hello guys, I am Sir Mars and you are watching Lectures ni Sir Mars. So sa video na ito, no, ang pag-uusapan natin ay tungkol sa structural forms. So ito ay isa sa mga unang topics natin sa structural theory na subject. Ayun, so I hope kung hindi pa kayo nakasubscribe sa aking channel, mag-subscribe na kayo guys at i-hit lamang yung notification bell para updated kayo sa mga bagong lectures ng ating channel. Okay, so let us now discuss structural forms. So, um, ang pag-uusapan natin guys sa video na ito ay dalawa. That is, yung una ay structural elements and yung pangalawa is yung types of structures. Okay, so unahin muna natin yung structural elements. So, sa some of the co most common structural elements from which structures are composed are number one, tie rods. Number two, beams and number three columns. Isa-isahin natin yung tatlong elements na ito. Okay? So, unahin muna natin yung tie rods. So, structural members subjected to a tensile force are often referred to as tie rods or bracing struts. Okay? So, take note guys na yung tie rods ay uh, subjected to tensile forces or tension. Okay? or tinatawag din natin itong mga bracing struts. So, due to the nature of this load, these members are rather slender. Ibig sabihin, payat ang mga members na ito, maliit yung kanilang cross-section, and they're often chosen from rods, bars, angles, or channels. So, ayun. So, ito yung mga typical na ginagamit natin na cross-sections para sa tie rods. Yung circular, pwedeng rectangular, katulad ng bar, or pwedeng angle, or pwedeng channel. So, ngayon, pag-usapan naman natin yung about sa beams. Okay? So, beams is also a structural element. So, beams are usually straight horizontal members used primarily to carry vertical loads. These are members designed to resist bending moment. They are often fixed or pin-supported and can be in the form of a steel plate girder reinforced concrete or laminated wood. So, ayun. So, madaming types ng beams, guys. No, So, pwede nating i-classify yung beams according to the material used. For example, meron tayong tinatawag na timber na beam kung made of wood siya. Meron tayong tinatawag na concrete beam kung concrete siya. And meron tayong tinatawag na steel beam kung uh, steel made siya. Okay? So, then, we can also classify the beams according to its support. So, kung meron tayong beam na yung kanyang support ay hinge tapos sa kabila ay roller, then that is called a simply supported beam. Kung meron tayong beam na fixed support yung isang dulo tapos yung isa ay free, then it is called a cantilevered beam. Then, kung meron tayong dalawang dulo ay puro fixed, then it is called a fixed supported beam. Then, Meron din tayong tinatawag na continuous beam. So, pag sinabi natin continuous beam, ito yung mga beams with more than two spans. Okay? Or ibig sabihin, meron siyang tatlo or mahigit pang support. So, katulad nito, this is called a continuous beam. Okay? So, meron din tayong tinatawag guys na tapered or haunched beam. So, ano ba yung ibig sabihin? Kapag sinabi natin tapered or haunched beam, ito yung beams with varying cross-section. Ibig sabihin, hindi constant yung kanyang cross-section, nag-iiba yung ating cross-sectional area. So, for example, nakikita natin figure 1, this is a tapered beam or a haunched beam, no? Kasi yung area natin dito is uh, sa isang dulo, yung kanyang area, cross-sectional area, is mas malaki compared sa isang dulo na cross-sectional area. So, ibig sabihin, it is called a tapered beam. Ayun, so, these are also tapered na mga structural elements. Ayun, so, nakikita natin dito sa picture na ito. So, again, kapag kasinabi nating tapered beam, ito yung mga beams na nagkakaroon ng varying cross-section. Ibig sabihin, hindi constant yung kanyang cross-section throughout its length. Next is, meron din tayong tinatawag na built-up beam. So, pag sinabi natin built-up beam, ito yung mga beams constructed from multiple elements. So, pag sinabi natin built-up beam, ito yung mga beams na ginawa by adding two or more elements or shapes. Okay? So, for example, this is called a beam. So, isang rectangular siya. 
So ngayon kapag ka may pinagsama tayong tatlo or dalawa or ilan pa na ganyan, then it is called a built-up beam. Okay? So meron din ganyan sa steel guys, kapag ka pinagsama-sama natin yung mga cold formed na mga shapes, no, ay makakabuo tayo ng isang built-up na cross-section or built-up beam. So, ayun. So, dito tayo sa pangatlo and that is columns. So, columns are members that resist actual compression force or compressive force. Kapag sinabi natin column, ito yung mga members that resist actual compression force. Take note that if the column also resist bending or kapag ka, for example, yung ating compression force ay merong eccentricity, it is called a beam column. So, ang mangyayari yung beam column, guys, kapag ka yung ating member is subjected to an actual compression and subjected din siya sa bending moment. So, it is a column at at the same time, it is a beam. Kasi, di ba, yung ating definition ng beam is that nagre-resist siya ng bending moment. So, kung meron tayong actual compression and bending moment, it is called a beam column. So, tubes and wide flange cross sections are often used for metal columns and circular and square cross sections with reinforcing rods are used for those made of concrete. So ngayon, pag-uusapan naman natin yung tungkol sa types of structures. The combination of structural elements and the materials from which they are composed is referred to as structural system. So each system is constructed by one or more of four basic types of structures. These are ranked in order of complexity of their force analysis. So number one is the trusses. So ito yung ating unang type of structure. Then pangalawa is the cables and arches. Then third is the frames. And the last is the surface structures. Okay, so isa-isahin natin ito guys. So una natin i-discuss is yung trusses. So, when the span of a structure is required to be large and its depth is not an important criterion for design, a truss may be selected. Trusses consist of slender elements usually arranged in triangular fashion. Okay? So, most often, it is economically feasible to use a truss to cover spans ranging from 30 feet or 9 meters to 400 feet or 122 meters although trusses have been used on occasion for spans of greater lengths. So, ayun na nga guys, no? So, ginagamit natin yung trusses para mag-span ng mga large distances. Usually kasi guys, no, kapag kamalayo na, for example, no, meron tayong dalawang poste and we want to connect those uh, columns, minsan, impractical yung gagamit tayo ng beam para ispan yung ganun kalayo. For example, mga 15 meters, parang ang layo na nun guys, no, to the extent na kapag ka naglagay ka ng beam, ay magbibend na yung ating beam. Ang ginagawa natin usually is truss. No, we use a truss, no. So, yung truss kaya niyang mag-span ng kaya niyang i-cover yung mga malalayong mga spans. So, ayun, so very effective nga yung trusses, guys. So, for example, no, nakita ko sa Araneta Coliseum. So, kung mapapansin natin sa loob ng Araneta Coliseum, wala siyang mga poste, guys, no. And uh, yung ginamit nila to span those very large distances ng ng columns ay mga trusses. So, ayun. So, they, this is a perfect example ng paggamit ng trusses. So, meron tayong dalawang klase ng trusses. Ito yung planar trusses or plain trusses and space trusses. So, unahin muna natin, ano ba yung planar trusses? Yung planar trusses is composed of members that lie in the same plane and are frequently used for bridge and roof support. So, example ng planar truss or plane truss is this one. So, ibig sabihin guys, no, lahat ng ating mga members ng trusses ay naglalay sa isang plane. So, ginagamit natin itong uh, planar trusses sa roof or pwede sa bridge, no? no Kasi nga, naglalay yung ating mga members sa isang plane lamang. Okay? So, that is planar trusses. Then, meron tayo tinatawag na space trusses. These trusses have members extending in three dimensions and are suitable for derricks and towers. So, this is an example of a space truss. Ayun. So, medyo komplikado yung analysis, guys, ng space truss. But, we are going to discuss how to compute or to analyze space trusses in the future. Okay? 
So, ayun. So, tapos na tayo sa trusses. We are now going to discuss the cables and arches. Two other forms of structures used to span long distances are the cable and the arch. Okay? So, uh, pag sinabi natin cable, these are usually flexible and carry their loads in tension. These are commonly used to support bridges and building roofs. When used for these purposes, the cable has an advantage over the beam and the truss, especially for spans that are greater than 150 feet or 46 meters. Okay, so usually nga guys, no, ginagamit natin yung cables for bridges and building roofs. So, isa sa mga bridge, no, is yung Marcelo Fernand Bridge, which is located in Cebu City. It is a, a cable state bridge, ayun. And then we also have the Magapit Suspension Bridge in Cagayan. So, ayun, it is a suspension bridge. So, in the future, guys, we are going to analyze these types of structures kapag na-discuss na tayo ng cables. Merong mga computation kung paano i-solve yung mga cables na ito. Okay? So, arches naman. So, arches achieve its strength in compression since it has a reverse curvature to that of the cable. So, these are frequently used in bridge structures dome roofs and for openings in masonry walls. So, ayun, so yung malagong long bridge is an arch. So, kung napapansin natin, meron siyang mga arch structure dito. So, yun yung kanyang main structural element. Ito yung nagre-resist ng mga loads, yung arch. Okay? So, ayun. So, tapos na tayo guys sa cables and arches. We are now going to discuss frames. So, frames are often used in buildings and are composed of beams and columns that are either pin or fixed supported. So, like trusses, frames extend in two or three dimensions. The loading on a frame causes bending of its members and if it has rigid conne joint connections, this structure is generally indeterminate from a standpoint of analysis. The strength of such a frame is, diver is derived from the moment interactions between the beams and the columns at the rigid joints. So, ayun. So, this is an example, of course, of a frame. So, again, pa sinabi natin frame ito is combination of columns and uh, beams. So, this is also a frame. So, two-dimensional ito guys, pwedeng maging three-dimensionals, no? Kapag ka frames. Then of course, we have surface structures. So, surface structures are made from a material having a very small thickness compared to its other dimensions. So, sometimes, this material is very flexible and can take the form of a tent or air-inflated structure. In both cases, the material acts as a membrane that is subjected to pure tension. It may also be made of rigid materials such as the reinforced concrete. As such, they may be shaped as folded plates, cylinders, or hyperbolic paraboloids and are referred to as thin plates or shells. These structures act like cables or arches since they support loads primarily in tension or compression with very little bending. In spite of this, plate or shell structures are generally very difficult to analyze due to the three-dimensional geometry of their surface. Such an, such an analysis is beyond the scope of this text and is instead covered in texts devoted entirely to this subject. So, isa sa mga examples ng mga pinakasikat na surface structure is the Georgia Dome, no? So, again, ito yung mga shells, halos mga shells yung, yung structure. I hope in the future makagawa tayo guys ng discussion para sa surface structure, no? Pero sa ating mga playlist ng structural theory, hindi pa nasasali natin yung surface structures. In the future, guys, no, I'm planning to do that. So, if you have questions, please don't be afraid to comment sa ating comment section below sa video na ito. No, and kapag ka nagkaroon ako ng time, no, sasagutin ko yung mga tanong nyo. So, see you in the next video, guys. If this lecture has helped you, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, you can comment below or send your questions to my Facebook page, Lectures Needs from Mars. I will paste the link in the video description. You can also download the PDF of my lectures and PDF references for civil engineering by visiting my site. The link is also in the video description.
Thank you again, guys. Once again, this is Sir Mars, and see you in the next lecture.